Yes, Mr. Solicitor. Wait, please. Hmm. Not the real question, not before I come to the real question, as I started, not only as a law officer, but even as an advocate, as an officer of the court, or even as a citizen, the lordships are dealing with a very, very complex subject, having a very, very profound social impact. I would earnestly reiterate my request, my lord, if your lordships can consider leaving all these questions to parliament for the reason, my lords, that your lordships have read the right to choose the sexual orientation in Nautet Johar and there is no dispute about it. Your lordships have said that based on one's sexual orientation, there cannot be any discrimination. There cannot be any dispute about it. Right of personal autonomy, namely right of choice, is also recognized by your lordships in Nautej. Therefore, my lord, the question is lord, now, what is the prayer before your lordship is right to get the socio-legal recognition of marriage? Lord, the question so far argued was what constitute marriage and between whom marriage can be constituted. The real question is who would take a call as to what constitute marriage between a particular class of people. Well, that takes me to my first respectful submission and my lord, my lord were very kind how, enough to say. What did you say? Who would take the call on? What constitutes marriage and between whom? Therefore, my lords, my lord, when I made the first request, my lords were very kind enough to say that let us have the canvas, let us have a broad conspectus of what their arguments are, and thereafter we'll take a call, your lordships, please not to reject that, my lords. So, my lord, I am reiterating that request. It's my appeal to your lordships, my lord. But there are several ramifications, not only, my lord, on the society, several ramifications, unintended ramifications on other statutes, which would need, my lord, a debate debate in the society, debate in various state legislatures, debate in civil society groups. So, my Lord, at the outset, my Lord, I, I say, my Lord, your Lordships can consider saving the rest of the exercise if your Lordships, my Lord, are convinced that this has to be preceded by some debate, particularly when the debates would take place in a forum where there would be assistance of national views, views of experts, views of impacts, views of effects it will have, and what are the implications on several laws. Lord, I have provided the list of about 160 sections from various provisions of law other than my Lord Special Marriage Act or law relating to marriage, where it cannot be reconciled with what is sought to be prayed, my Lord. Another thing, my Lord. Your Lordships have the legislative policy so far. The legislative policy has always been in all the laws, not which your lordships have come across on several occasions, has been to recognize conventional man and conventional woman. I understand difference between gender and sex, sexuality and gender, etc. We are not going into it. But all laws, my lord, whether it is criminal law, civil law, any other law, law giving protection to women, etc., they define the man and woman in the conventional sense. When this question is being debated before your lordships for the first time, I'm posing a question to myself and my lord, based on that appealing to your lordships, should it not go first to the parliament or the state legislature? No one is sitting in on value judgment whether this should be, this is good, this is bad, 
this should be done, this should not be done. There is no stigma attached. Not the, the, the parliament has accepted their right of choice, their right of sexual preference, their right of autonomy, and their right of privacy. Right of choice? Autonomy, sexual autonomy in terms of sexual preference. And the privacy, that is right of intimate relationships, which your lordship said, my lord, something okay. happening between two consenting adults in privacy. Why I say, my lord, that there is no stigma. The legislative policy is very clear now in the transgender sect, where the term transgender is very widely defined to include, my lord, all shades and all spectrums of what we call LGBTQ+. The Transgender Act is the response of the Parliament, my lord, in view of Naute Johar, my lord, and other judgments, my lord. There, there are specific provisions where discrimination is prohibited and it's criminalized. I'll take your lordships to the my lord, scheme and architecture of the Transgender Act. There is no stigma. The limited question is whether right to marry can be prayed for as a social institution by way of a judicial adjudication before this honorable court. The right to marry does not include right to compel the state to create a new definition of marriage. Parliament can do. But it's not an absolute right. Lord, kindly consider when your Lord, 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 therefore, my Lord, early, my Lord, again at the cost of repetition, my appeal to your Lordship is, my Lord, that rather than my Lord taking this matter any further, if your Lordships are convinced that this is possibly a subject which may better, my Lord, be left to the choice of the Parliament, which is the law, my Lord, if need be, I'll assist your Lordship with that law. And the subject is such that your Lordships may not be in a position to conceive of variety of situations which may arise and which will have to be taken care of. Lord, mere declaration that they have a right would be, my Lord, begging the question. If they have a right, how the rights would be regulated? How variety of problems will be solved? And I, I'll give examples, my Lord, which only Parliament can take care of. Now, my Lord, kindly consider, my Lord, pre-56, marriages used to take place between heterosexual persons, my Lord, conventional man, conventional woman. There was no recognition except societal acceptance. Once it gained societal acceptance, in Hindus at least, it came to be codified in 1956 by way of a Hindu marriage act. For other religions, by and large, it remains uncodified. Marriage between heterosexual, same religion persons. I am on the concept of marriage. The social status which it gets. Now, my Lord, the moment any right which was pre-existing even without recognition by law is recognized, it is also regulated. And then there is no absolute right to marry even today between heterosexual couples. And why I say this? 
a man has to be 21 years and a woman has to be 18 years, meaning thereby the law prescribes when to marry. The autonomy goes. Bigamy is prohibited. So law prescribes how many times you can marry simultaneously till your wife is or husband is alive. There are prohibitions regarding degrees of prohibited relationships, meaning thereby law regulates whom not to marry. Once the law recognizes this socio-legal institution as a marriage, you just can't walk out of that institution. Law regulates even that on what grounds you can have judicial separation and on what ground you can have divorce. So how to separate is also a legislatively regulated provision. So coming to the privacy part. Even the codified law amongst heterosexuals protect the privacy of man and a woman inside the bedroom. But there are certain provisions where there is an intrusion to privacy rights also. For example, importance is a ground for divorce. That is something very, very private and personal between the two human beings. But then, if it is a case of divorce, you will have to come out and prove it. So your privacy is breached. The substance of my submission, which I will elaborate, is that once a legislative recognition is given to a particular form of union, it comes with it several regulatory provisions. And it is only the parliament Lord, which can conceive of several situations which would arise in this relationship which is now recognized and can provide for its regulation. It would be impossible for the court to conceive all situations. Now, Lord, my, my propositions, followed. I'll just follow one of the, there are 10 propositions followed. Follow the very heart of Special Marriage Act, and I'll, I'll show that, is a recognition of marriage between a conventional man and a conventional woman. Your lordships need not Lord, uh, write, because I, I have, Lord, uh, in that page three, my lord, I have my lord, written them. Second, the request, my lord, and I will demonstrate, my lord, more effectively. The request ultimately is that you please rewrite to suit our situation, which can be done by the parliament. I am not, my lord, opposed to the situation or some regulation coming into place. By whom is the question? And that rewriting would not be possible. This also, your lordships need not Lord, uh, invest a lot of time or energy Lord, in writing it. This rewriting is not permissible, not only on the ground that the courts would not rewrite the law or say what the law should have been, but the thing which we are now seeking to achieve, the petitioners are seeking to achieve, was consciously omitted in Special Marriage Act. That is one more reason it cannot be read into it. I will not make that submission good. So, my lord, your lordship's exercise would be constrained, my lord, by four fundamental principles. One, the court will not change the character of the law. And the character your lordship will have to examine from the entire architecture of the act. Read with 
all allied statutes and the history which preceded enactment of the special act special marriage act second constraint would be the court cannot substitute the legislative intent which is otherwise manifest And third, your lordships will not, my lord, read words of larger amplitude in place of words of smaller amplitude. Namely, person is a word of larger amplitude in place of male and female. Next, my lord, uh, proposition. Lord, this exercise, even if your lordships are persuaded to undertake, would necessarily <laughs> have an unintended impact on the heterosexual couples because Special Marriage Act essentially is for regulating the marriages between intra-faith heterosexual couples. Now, I'm sorry. Lord, next proposition is your lordships would not my lord, undertake an exercise whereby the same statute is applicable differently to one class of persons and totally differently to another class of persons, namely heterosexuals and non heterosexuals. So the same statute is applicable to differently to different classes of. So no, we use lot, namely heterosexuals and non heterosexuals. So we use one lens for heterosexual couples and another lens for non heterosexual yeah, couples. Yes, my lord. And I'm, I'm grateful, my lord. I, I could not put it that succinctly, my lord, but that's the respectful submission. And it would be impossible for your lordships to reconcile this classification. I'll be able to show from the scheme and structure of the Special Marriage Act. Next, my lord. Lord, we are dealing with, let us understand what we are dealing with. Lord, we say LGBTQAI+. Correct, my lords? We know L stands for lesbians, G for gays, B for bisexuals, T for transgenders, Q for queers, I for intersex, A for asexual. Lord, we have not tried to know what plus means. And my lord, this is going to be the core of the problem which a lordship would face if the judiciary were to take over the function of regulating the relationship after recognizing it as a socio legal relationship. Lord, there are 72 shades or variations. That is why, my lord, what we write is plus. And please examine, my lord, how your lordships would, even if your lordships are persuaded to, my lord, kind of undertake an exercise of rewriting. Lord, deal with these varieties of situations. Lord, please allow me to place my Lord, uh, that my Lord, at page. I'll just my Lord, give some examples to my Lord, annexure A, page 109. Of what, Mr. Solicitor? Of my written submissions. Lord. Just got Lord, uh, my Lord Justice uh, Paul, my Lord, has my written submissions. Yes, yes. Written submissions. There are several different shades and spectrums. Lord. It's not that we are dealing with either lesbians and gays and transgenders. We are dealing with some Lord. Lord, it is note one. Read the submissions on the question that only legislature can deal with the subject matter. Yeah. I'll just Lord, give some examples. I'm not going to read all 72 categories. Lord, can I for ready reference, Lord, give the physical copy? No, 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 no. Which page you said, Mr. So let's you Referring to the kind. In fact, your physical copies, please send them away back to your office. PDF 113, my lord. I'm sorry, my lord. It uh, was a loose ball. I forgot that I am also using a physical copy and your lordship's continuing mandamus is being breached. <laughs> okay. I tell me, my lord. The threat is that they're going to be confiscated. <laughs> yeah, yes, my lord. I, I will be, my lord. On there are dual, sir, union of India submissions. Let's take one. Uh, what did you say, uh, solicitor? Note one. 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 Note
written submissions note one only the legislature can deal with the subject matter is that yes, what you title manot yes yes and go over submissions are other question are related questions huh? other related to the folder link statement we don't find the folder Page yes. not one. Page one one three is other related. Okay, well, you got it. Got no, it. Not one. Okay. Only the legislature is about. Only leading us. That's very nice. Yes. <laughs> the PDF number one one three. Yes. PDF one one three. Where all these definitions are given. Yes. Well, look, kindly, well, look, now visualize. PDF your lordships were to give recognition to LGBTQ plus, which is an unidentified class of persons. And there are at least 160 statutory provisions in different statutes. How, my lord, we will be able to reconcile with this, my lord, different spectrums and shades? Please see first a gender. A person who does not, your lordship gets, my lord, my lord the chief justice, yes. your ladyship gets, my lord. A person who does not identify themselves with or experience any gender. A gender person are also called null gender, genderless, gender void, or gender neutral. Please see three. I'm just giving my lord a flavor, my lord. That it's impossible to reconcile by in a judgment, my lord. Even parliament will have to undertake a humongous exercise if the parliament, as a policy, decides to recognize the marriage. A gender that is indefinable or indomitable. People identifying with this gender refuse to be categorized in any particular gender identity. So whether they are man or woman, which provision of which law which governs either man or woman, lord, will be a big question. Then four. Also called abs gender, this gender identified changes according to one's surroundings. This is kind of a fluid. There is no nothing not specific. Then six. This is based on the person's mood swings or fluctuations. So it can a person can be having a lot of male sexuality for some time and a female sexuality for some time. And say at the time of divorce, if a lot is where to read person. And they get the recognition of marriage under the Special Marriage Act. Lord, what would be their gender when we test, Lord, the grounds of divorce? What is the source of this table, Mr. Oh, Sir? Yes. Lord, this is, Lord. Uh, I don't think, Lord, it is. There are various sources, Lord, but taken essentially from, from. Are we taken from somewhere, some glossary or something? Yes. Like. Turn to page the previous page. It gives it the footnote. Source is very simple. But, Lord, I have checked up from two, three sources. This list is consistent. Uh, yes, yeah. Uh, you, you, have, you, you have given in your footnote. In 45. the footnote, yes, Lord, I have given medicinenet.com. Where is it? On page uh, 108, footnote 45 at the heading. So, yes, medicine net. Footnote 43, Lord. 45. 45. 45. Other yes. Then, my Lord, A. Alexi gender. The person has a fluid gender identity between more than one type of gender, although they cannot name the genders they feel fluid in. Then, the gender identity stands apart from existing social gender constructs. It means having a strong specific gender identity that is neither male nor female. My Lord, transgender, my Lord, is different. Transgender, my Lord, is conventionally, as we know, is different. Now defined to be to mean everything, my Lord. But transgender means, my Lord, a person who has sexual genitals other than what, my Lord, he is supposed to be born with. My Lord, then. Am I a gender having a gender identity that changes depending on the person one is emotionally attached to? If he's emotionally, if a person is emotionally attached to a man, then he has a male sexuality. If woman, then he has a feminine sexuality. Then embonic. The person identifies themselves as both man and woman and yet does not belong to either. Therefore, I repeatedly say this is an unidentifiable class we are dealing with. Then, amica gender, a gender fluid identity where a person changes their gender depending on the friends they have. It's also called Malod, by some as pure gender. Malod. Malod, 18, uh, 17, Malod. anogender, the gender identity fades in, fades in and out in intensity, but always comes back to the same gender feeling. So at particular act, he has one gender identity, then it changes, it comes back. These are not facts I'm giving, I'm without having any value judgment. The only limited purpose of showing is that would it be prudent or possible for the court to lay down, my lord, regulations, even if your lordships are persuaded to confer them with the socio-legal status of marriage. Because then regulating it would be impossible because there would be 101 contingencies. 
which which Malod, with best of the assistance on our side, your lordships Malod, cannot conceive of. Then Malod, kindly turn the page, Malod, 27, exi gender, a gender identity that is between the two extremes of a gender and any other type of gender. Both the genders are experienced one at a time without any overlapping. The two genders are described as on the opposite ends of an axis and by gender, having two gender identities at the same or different times. Then 30, blur gender, also called gender fuss. Blur gender means having more than one gender identities that blur into each other so that no particular type of gender identity is clear. Etc. my lord, etc. I am not giving examples, my lord. Now, my lord, your lordships are necessarily dealing with an unidentifiable class. Now, please come to my lord, page 16 of my written submissions. My lord, would it be prudent or legally permissible, my lord, to deal with this subject, my lord, on the judicial side? Your lordships are not examining a prohibition against marriage. My lord, kindly bear this distinction is mine. There is no prohibition amongst LGBTQ plus community to marry. Your lordships are not examining the validity. Your lordships are being requested to confer a legal status of marriage which all religion considers to be an institution. I am not on the morality of it. So that would be a valid consideration. Lord, page 4 to 15, I have given my Lord, what is the institution of marriage in the Indian context? In case of Hindus, what the Hindu scriptures say, in case of Muslims, what Holy Quran says, in case of Christians, what Holy Bible says. It's a social institution conferred with the legal status. And all these social institutions are predating the statutes and have accepted marriage as an institution only between heterosexual couples. And again, my Lord, we are not sitting in judgment over that decision. That's what the society has accepted since millions of years. Uh, Surista, where are you referring to on this aspect? Page 4 to 15 of my submissions, my Lord. Page 6 to 15, I'm sorry. Actually, your, even my Lord. Your formulation is the best is best brought out in page 11. Yes, my Lord. 44. Ye yes, my Lord. Those four points. So may, may I just read, my Lord, for your, my Lord, so that it, I, I make myself more clear. The world religions have shaped the history of marriage and family and continue to form the basis of marriage as an essentially religious concept. While it is correct that there is significant divergence between different faiths and their practices in relation to marriage, what must not be lost sight of is that there is more convergence than conflict in teachings of mar teachings, marriage and family. All six marriage, a major world religions overlap on the following attributes of marriage as identity. Then I have given the source. First, each of these religious traditions confirms marriage as a vital and valuable institution and practice that lies at the heart of the family and at the foundation of broader society. Second, each tradition recognizes that marriage has inherent goods that lie beyond the preferences of the couple. One fundamental good of marriage emphasized by Judaism, Christianity, Hinduism and Confucianism is that the husband and wife complete each other. Indeed, they are transformed through marriage into a new person a new one, fresh reality. Another fundamental good of marriage is the procreation and nature of children. Lord, this is not an archaic concept. Special Marriage Act uses the word procreation. Children are sacred gifts to a married couple who, who carry forth not only the family name, lineage and property, but also the communities, religion, culture and language. All these religions thus see a close relation between marriage and children, just as they saw a close relation, although not an identity, between marriage and sexual expression. And all these religions teach that stable marriages and families are essential to the well-being of children. This is what Malod Kara says in the adoption. Two years of stable relationship as husband and wife. Third, each tradition regards marriage as a special form of sacrament, promise 
oath or contract over any generic relationship, economic or social. It has a special unique status, my lord. For Hindus, it is a sacrament. For Muslims, it's a sacred contract, but nonetheless a sacred contract. And across the faith, what is recognized as a marriage is between heterosexual couple. Fourth, each tradition eventually came to insist that marriage dependent in its essence on the mutual consent of the man and the woman. Even if the man and women are represented by parents or guardians during the contract negotiations, their own consent is essential to the validity of their marriage. Jewish, Hindu, Confucian and Muslim writers came to this insight early in the development of marriage. The Christian tradition reached this insight canonically only in the 12th century and Buddhism more recently still. Fifth, marriage is a concept that is deeply embedded as a union between two opposite sexes ordained by the religious text and practices specifically for the furtherance of society and the orderly influence between persons inhabiting the society and following specific religions. Now your lordships have a variety of shades to be dealt with, variety of problems which are to be encountered, variety of religions and their personal laws but not intermingling and your lordships have an option on in my respectful submission possibly the only constitutionally permissible option to require the parliament or to wait for the parliament to do that. My Lord, please now come to page 16. My Lord, I am citing some judgments. I will not read all. But these are my Lord, some very illuminating judgments. My Lord, at page 17. My Lord, write. 17. 17. It starts at 16. The title is Democratic Right of People to Regulate Themselves. Uh, you so said the society has a right to regulate ourselves. 17. Okay. Lord, PDF 25. 21. 21. My Lord. PDF is 21, my lord. We as a society, my lord, govern who will be the components of that society, my lord, and that governance comes in, my lord, the elected representatives whom we decide, my lord, to elect. Now, please come, my lord, this Reynold Rajmani judgment. I'll read only the highlighted part, my lord, so that I don't uh, invest your lordships more time. It cannot be denied that society is generally interested in maintaining the marriage bond and preserving the matrimonial state with a view to protecting societal stability the family home and the proper growth and happiness of children of the marriage. I'll skip the rest, underlined portion. But although the grounds for divorce have been liberalized, they nevertheless continue to form an exception to the general principle favoring the continuation of the marital tie. In our opinion, when a legislative provision specifies the grounds on which divorce may be granted, they constitute the only conditions on which the court has jurisdiction to grant divorce. If grounds need to be added to those already specifically set forth in the legislation, that is the business of the legislature and not of the courts. Lord, please Lord, see these, Lord, in light of what I am going to show, the structure of the Special Marriage Act would be if it is redrafted the way petitioners have prayed for. Even their prayers are Lord, absolutely made. I will be able to demonstrate that. But first, Lord, law on the point. Five. When therefore section 10 of the Indian Divorce Act specifically sets forth the grounds on which a marriage may be dissolved, additional grounds cannot be included by the judicial construction of some other section unless that section plainly intends so at the foot. However, whether a provision for divorce by mutual consent should be included in the Indian Divorce Act is a matter of legislative policy. The courts cannot extend or enlarge legislative policy by adding a provision to the statute which was never enacted there. Now, therefore, I started by saying that marriage is a socio-legal institution. Its recognition is a matter of legislative policy. Then, my Lord, Keshavan and Bharti, my Lord, kindly allow me to read, my Lord, this would guide, my Lord, us throughout, my Lord, the hearing of this case. How we construe the constitution in the context of the marriage being given the recognition, my Lord. Underline portion. It cannot be denied that provisions of the constitution of other countries are designed for the political, social and economic outlook of the people of those countries for whom they have been framed. The seed of the constitution is sown in a particular soil and it is the nature and the quality of the soil and the climatic conditions prevalent there which will ensure its growth and determine the benefits which it confers on its people. We cannot plant the same seed in a different climate and in a different soil and expect the same growth and the same benefit therefrom. Law varies according to the requirements of time and place. Justice thus becomes a relative concept 
varying from society to society according to the social milieu and economic conditions prevailing therein. The problems which conferred confront those courts in the background of the state of the society, the social and economic setup, the requirements of people with a totally different ethics, philosophy, temperament and outlook, differentiate them from the problems and outlook which confront the courts in this country. It is not a case of shuttling out, shutting out light where they could profitably enlighten the bene and benefit us. The concern is rather to safeguard against the possibility of being blinded by it. Lord, this takes us to Lord, the theory that ultimately societal acceptance is one of the considerations for recognition of any union. 